Boys and Girls Tonight story is The Very Smart Pea and the Princess to Be, written by Minnie Gray. And the reason why I love this story is it reminds me of one of my favorite fairy tales, The Princess and the Pea. So stay tuned. This is like a sequel. Um, because it was written by Minnie Gray, at the library you're going to find it under the letter G. It makes a G sound. So without further ado, here's our cover our title page and I'm going to scoop so you can see pictures better many years ago I was born in the palace garden among rows of carrots and beets and cabbages I nestled snugly in a velvety pod with my brothers and sisters I felt a tingle I knew that somehow I would be important peas grow in pods like so even though we don't always see them when we get them out of the bag or the can. Well, the time came for us to go to the palace kitchen. We were shelled and put into a bowl. We were going to be part of a new recipe, and then suddenly I was picked from the pile. I was put into a little box with soft tissue to protect me from bruising, and I was taken by the queen. I wonder why the queen would want a single pea. Have you thought? Well, at this point in my story, I'm going to have to give you some background information. Let's start with the queen. A year earlier, before I even started to grow my pea plant, the queen had been nagging her son. You are nearly 34 years old, Prince, she said. It is really high time you married. The public expects it, your kingdom demands it, and if you are not married within one year, I shall stop your allowance the money that you might get every week. Well, the prince got a quite large allowance and he didn't want it to be taken away. I'll start looking for a bride immediately, mother, he answered. And the search began. The prince traveled the known world. He met princesses of all shapes and sizes with a wide range of hobbies and interests. This one was too loud. This one was too quiet. This was too energetic. This one was too scruffy. This one was too tidy. Too grumpy, too sleepy, too pink, too scary. And this one had strange pets. But none of them seemed like real princesses. Somehow they were not right for him. So I wonder how he finds the right prince. After a year's search, the prince returned home feeling glum. What do you think glum might feel like? Notice I said glum. I didn't say glum. He was feeling pretty sad. That's enough, shouted the queen. She stormed off to the palace kitchen. She came back with me in my little box. Now, said the queen, listen carefully. This is something only queens know. A real princess will be able to feel this tiny pea as she sleeps, even if she is sleeping on top of 20 mattresses and feather beds. And you are going to marry the first girl who can feel this pea. I wonder how the prince feels about that. Well, months passed. I spent most nights in the darkness under a pile of 20 mattresses and feather beds and princesses. This page said the queen put out a want ad. Wanted a real princess. Well, in the morning, the queen would ask, and how did you sleep, my dear? And the princesses had been properly brought up, and they always answered politely, like a log, thank you, ma'am, or like a baby, thank you, ma'am. And they all said, what a comfortable bed. They were, as I said, all very polite princesses. Now the prince will never find his princess at this rate, I thought to myself, I must help somehow. How do you think this little pea is going to help the prince find a princess. Well, one night, a furious storm raged. Rain lashed at the palace. Thunderclaps shook the walls. Lightning flashed through the window panes. There was a little knock on the palace door. A small, wet person stood on the doormat. Could this be the real princess, gasped the queen. Well, before she could say a word, the small, wet person was on top of the bed, of, uh, was put to bed on top of the 20 mattresses and feather beds. With me, of course, underneath. In the darkness under the mattresses, I recognized the soft snoring. It was my gardener. I must help, I thought. 
I tried jiggling and wriggling, but the storing continued quietly. I must do something, I thought. So I inched my way to the top, and then I started to climb, and slowly I struggled to the top of the towering pile. I softly rolled across the pillow, right to the girl's ear. There is something large and round and very uncomfortable in the bed under you, I whispered. And while she slept, I told her about the large, round, uncomfortable thing for three hours. In the morning, the queen asked the girl how she had slept. Oh, it was awful, she sighed. Something large and round and uncomfortable was bothering me all night. The queen was delighted to hear this. The wedding was lovely. The queen was interested to meet the new princess's parents, and I'm sure they will all live happily ever after. But as for me, I became a very important artifact, and I now have my own glass case. I am on display. And if you visit the right museum and look in the right place, you may have a chance to see me. And that's the end of the very smart P and the princess to be. Interesting story, don't you think? All right, there will be a lesson in Flipgrid, so check it out. See you soon. Stay safe.